Welcome to Victorious Living with Pastor Charles Cowan. Now let's join Pastor Cowan and the congregation of Faith is the Victory Church. This is Victorious Living. I want to share with you tonight on responding to God's faithfulness. You know, sometimes we can narrow one little segment where we're, where we're faithful and leave a lot of other parts of where we should uh, be faithful, uh, kind of leave it out, leave it out of our life. And so we, we think because that we are faithful in this one little area that, that covers the whole agenda, but that's not true at all. So let's begin tonight. We're going to look first of all, and I'll, I'll read the scripture to you and then put it on the screen. But so often, so many times people, at least people that I talk to here and other places that I go, it's easy to slip over into the thinking that God is going to initiate everything in reference to his blessings in our life. Let me say that again. That it's easy for us, for a person, I don't know about you, but it's easy for a person to slip over into the thinking that it's God who's going to initiate every blessing that he's promised us. But that's not true. Now, he may initiate some, you know, sovereignly. I, that's not to say that he can't do that. But, but by and large, we are responsible to initiate uh, into our lives the blessing of God or the blessing that he has provided for us or the promises that he has made to us. In fact, Isaiah, the, the first chapter, the 19th verse, a very familiar uh, verse of scripture we all have heard through the years and it simply goes like this. If you be willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. So we see then that there is an initiation on our part. Amen. If you be willing and obedient. Uh, he says that we will eat the good of the land. Now, faith, and talking about faithfulness tonight, faithfulness or faith is more than just our confessions. Now, don't, 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 I don't want you to think that I am, uh, you know, lowering the importance of confession because we'll talk a little bit about that if we get that far tonight. I, I am not taking any the emphasis or the importance off of our confessions of faith, but there's more to our faith than the confessions alone. There are actions of our faith in the, in within the framework of the actions of our faith. We can we could uh, we could name numerous things that are in there, like loving people, forgiving. Uh, you, you name it. That all could be in the framework of our faith life. And so we don't, uh, we don't diminish any part of faith. That's not, uh, that's not what we do. So faithfulness is the supreme test of willingness and obedience simply because willingness and obedience is not a one thing and it's done. It's not a one time thing and it's done. So let me make the statement to you again that faithfulness where God's concerned, let me add that in there. Faithfulness is the supreme test of our willingness and obedience simply because willingness and obedience is not a one-time thing and it's done. So often I think sometimes people could feel that way or do feel, maybe some do feel that way, that, that doing something one time is all that's necessary, but that's not true where faithfulness to God is concerned. Now, if we, had to, if we had to say, what is the one thing that God is looking for in his children, in the believer? What is the one thing? Well, maybe there's, maybe there's more than just the one thing, but let me word it like this. What is one of the most important things that God is looking for in your life, in my life? Well, obviously it is faithfulness to him because we are we are in the body, the body of Christ. We are children of God. And God is looking for our faithfulness 
to him, not on a one-time basis, but on an, but on an everyday basis, he's looking for faithfulness in his children. And so hopefully we all understand that and know what that, know what that, uh, what that means. So the bond of union with Christ in the New Testament is obedience through faithfulness by which the believer becomes a disciple. You know, you hear people say, well, uh, or I have heard people say, well, I, I believe in Christ and that makes me a disciple of Christ, and that's not true. There are people that have believed upon Christ as their Savior, but they're not a follower. Yes. A disciple is a follower of Christ. Well, to, what does it mean to be a follower of Christ? It means you simply follow the instructions that he gives to us from the scriptures. The instructions that he gives to us from the scriptures through the, through the, the, the writers of, of the, uh, of the uh, scriptures. And so we know then that, that faithfulness is, as I've said earlier, faithfulness is one thing that God's looking for in his children. Not just faithfulness to assemble ourselves together. Sometimes that's where we put a lot of emphasis on it in the Bible. It does teach us forsake not the assembling of yourselves together. So sometimes we can kind of narrow everything down to that. But there's a lot more areas of faithfulness that God is looking for in his children than the faithfulness to assemble ourselves together. And I said a little bit about that earlier here when I started, that the faithfulness to love, faithfulness to forgive, faithfulness, uh, you name it, and lots of other things. So the bond of union would be where two things are united, where we and Christ are united, where we and Jesus are united together by birth, when uh, the bond of union with Christ in the New Testament is obedience through faithfulness by which the believer becomes a disciple. And so we see then that uh, faithfulness is a key component, very key component in our faith life, our walk of faith, living by faith. Faithfulness is a very key component uh, in that. Uh, Luke's gospel, uh, the 14th chapter, 27th verse says like this, and whosoever does not bear his cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. So a lot of times people say, well, what is my cross? And a lot, a lot of times we, they can think, well, you know, hey, look, we, we, we can't bear a cross like Jesus bore a cross. Well, certainly not. We can't bear a cross where we're bearing the sins of the whole world and all the things that Jesus bore when he went to, went to the cross at Mount Calvary. So what is our cross as a Christian that we are to, we are to bear? Our cross is to bear his instructions. Our cross is to be faithful, to have faithfulness to God, to his instructions through our obedience. That's our cross. Well, now we know then that a lot of people don't fit in that category. <laughs> a lot of people says they're Christians, and that's not to say they're not Christian, that they believed upon the Lord as their Savior. That, that certainly, certainly makes them a child of God. But like I said, it does not make them a disciple. Amen. A disciple is one, and let me repeat myself several times. So here, a disciple is one who is faithful to every uh, instruction that is outlined in the scripture or that God gives to us or that Jesus gave to us in the four gospels. So we see then that uh, our cross is not a cross where we bear the sins of many, where we bear the sicknesses and diseases and all of the things that Jesus bore when he went to his cross in, in our stead or for us. Our cross is to bear our obedience, our faithfulness, to him, that's the cross that you and I, that we are to bear as a Christian. And we know this, uh, you know, I'm sure everybody in here is, is bearing your cross, but every Christian is not bearing their cross. Every Christian is not bearing, uh, uh, bearing their cross. So a disciple of Jesus is one who follows Jesus' teachings, and in effect, this in itself 
is taking up our cross of faithfulness to obey and do his teachings. Now, here's the thing about, you know, the Bible says when Jesus comes, he said, well, I find faith on the earth. Really, if you study that out, what he's, what he's really saying, will I find my people faithful when he comes back to the earth? And so, you know, there's, there's a lot of questions in here about the rapture. And, uh, you know, you can hear different people say different things about the rapture. And one, one can say this and the other can say that. And, you know, you get a whole lot in here. But I did hear this one time. The Lord said it to me. You can take it. You can take it for what it's worth to you. That in praying and just seeking the Lord, and, and I, heard, I heard inside that, that these words, everybody is not going to be rapture ready. Now, you can take that for whatever, you know, whatever. But when, he, when Jesus comes back to there, he's looking for those who have been faithful to bear their cross. So I say that to say this, and you probably, you may have a different opinion, that's fine, and different belief on it, that's fine, no problem. But I think sometimes that we feel just because that we have accepted Christ as our Savior, not necessarily become a disciple, that, that, that we'll be rapture ready when he comes back and looks for the faithfulness among his people. Okay, that's all I'm going to say about that. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to be like, a, who, who was it? Uh, Forrest Gump. That's all I'm going to say about that. Okay. <laughs> okay. And so we see then that our cross is not to bear something that Jesus bore for us on the wooden cross that he was nailed to there on Mount Calvary. The enemy of our cross, the enemy of bearing our cross is simply this. The enemy of our cross bearing is disobedience and unfaithfulness spawned from the carnal or the fleshly side of our being. You know, sometimes, uh, you know, uh, people don't always consider themselves to be carnal, but it's not hard to figure out whether we're carnal or not. <laughs> I mean, really, all you got to do is just stop and think for a moment. <laughs> am I spiritual or am I carnal? Uh, when's the last time you prayed? How often do you pray? Uh, have you forgiven, uh, you know, uh, do you rejoice? Do you, you know, you go through all of that, uh, you know, and so, uh, well, I don't do none of that. <laughs> well, where you come from? You're coming from the carnal side when you don't do that. Amen. Because there's something that keeps us from doing that. I say us, people, a person. It's something that keeps a person from doing that, and it has to come from the carnal side because it sure doesn't come from the spiritual side. Right. And so it's not hard to figure out whether we're carnal or whether we're spiritual uh, and uh, those kinds of things. Okay, so once again, faithfulness is taking up our cross, which is obedience to the teachings and instructions outlined in the scripture. We've said that. So this is the first step in responding to God's faithfulness. The first step in responding to God's faithfulness is our faithfulness to him. And so the faithfulness is taken up our cross, which is obedience to the teachings and the instructions outlined in the scripture. I'm responding to God's faithfulness by my faithfulness to do what he asked me to do. And it's called, that's what it's called. It's called faithfulness. So this is the first step in responding to God's faithfulness is my response of faithfulness to him. Okay. And so, first of all, what is the meaning of faithfulness to God? What does it mean? Let me give you a few little definitions here, a few one-word definitions. What is the meaning of faithfulness to God? And it's more, like I said, it's more than just saying I'm a Christian or I'm saved. Uh, it's this. Uh, faithfulness to God. Fidelity, stableness, reliability, Dependability, loyal, and trustworthy are words that break down all that is involved in faithfulness to God. So I'm going to say that again to you. What, what does it say? What is the meaning of faithfulness to God? Fidelity, stableness, reliable, dependable, loyal, trustworthy, all these are words that break down all that is involved in faithfulness. So these are the distinguishing characteristics, those, those words, and there's more, those words that I just mentioned to you. These are the distinguishing 
characteristics of maturity. Let me say that again. These are the distinguishing characteristics of maturity. Now we know this, that not all Christians are mature. Amen. All right, that went over real big, didn't it? Arch gave me an amen. Thank you, Brother Arch. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. So what did I just say? These are the, these are the characteristics of maturity. So when, th when these things are missing in our life that I just, just uh, uh, said to you a moment ago about faithfulness, when that's missing in my life, there is maturity. But I said this, a lot of people may feel like that just because they're saved and accepted Christ, that they are faithful, but and could even consider that they, that would include maturity in that, and that's not true. Because maturity is a process. Amen. The new birth is a, is a one-time thing that a person you know, receives into their life. So maturity becomes a process. It's a process of, of learning, it's a process of growing, it's a process of doing, it's a process of acting. It is a process. So when these things that I've just, that I mentioned, when these things are missing, then th there is some maturity missing in my life. All right, everybody together. Everybody understand what I said to you? So there, there, thereby there are people who accepted Christ 10 years ago, 20 years ago, 30 years ago that are not mature. They are still babes in Christ. Now I trust that's not me, <laughs> I trust that's not you, but, but it's possible. But just because they, you have some longevity of, of 10 years, 20 years, 30 years of being quote unquote a Christian does not mean that that individual is a mature Christian. What's God looking for in faithfulness? He's looking for the maturity that faithfulness produces in the life of the believer. So will he find, when, when the Lord returns, will he find faithfulness in the earth among his people? And so what, what should our answer be to that? Yes. Yeah, our answer should be, yeah, come on. That was kind of weak, but I, you know, come on. What, what should our response to that be? Yes, Lord you will find me faithful because you are what? Because there is fidelity to God in your relationship. What was the other? Can you remember? Yeah, there is, what, what did I say? Let me find it. So, there, there's stableness in your relationship. There's reliability in your relationship. There's dependability in your relationship. There's loyalty in your relationship. And there's trustworthiness in your relationship. Putting all that together in my life as a Christian will make me a mature Christian walking by faith, walking in faith, walking in faithfulness. I become a mature Christian. Christian, so thereby I am a disciple of Christ, of Jesus, because I am a follower of his instructions in, in the word. Amen. Amen. So these are distinguishing characteristics of maturity that are to be found in the child of God. Paul wrote it this way in 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 3. We are bound to give God, let me back up, we are bound to thank God he said, we are bound to it. In other words, if you look the word bound up, bound means we are responsible. We are bound to, we are responsible. As Christians, we are responsible to thank God every now and then, one, once a week. No, no, we are bound. We are responsible to thank God always for you. Now he's talking to the people there at Thessalonica in the church there. Uh, uh, for you brethren as it is meet because that your faith, now he uses the word faith but it, if you run it down you'll find out because of your faithfulness. He's addressing the people there in Thess Thessalonica. He's, he's come on down in this one verse of scripture and he's talking about their faithfulness. Now watch what he says to, in here. We are bound to thank God always for you, brethren, as it is meet or as it is necessary. Meet being the word necessary. It is ne necessary. You know, it's like, uh, it's like uh, uh, John, he's not, he's not going to help me remember where I was at, but maybe y'all can't. Uh, but uh, uh, Jesus, 
uh, told Nicodemus, how many of you remember what Jesus told Nicodemus when Nicodemus says, what must I do? He said, what did Jesus, what was his answer? You must be born again. Now the word must there uh, uh, is, is a word that comes from the word ought. We ought to do, we must must do. Now here's the definition of the word. It is, it is the necessity in the nature of the case. So when Nicodemus asked Jesus, what must I do? What should I do? What must I, I do? And Jesus' answer was, you must be born again because it's the necessity in the nature of the case for you to get into the kingdom of God. Amen. And so we can see then that, uh, that it, it's necessary uh, things that we have to do, uh, necessary things. And so Paul is commending the people in Thessalonica, the church there, the Thessalonian in Thess Thessalonica, the Thessalonians. He said, we are bound to thank God always for you. He's just simply saying to the people, we are bound. Uh, it's necessary. Uh, we are responsible for thanking God for you. And let me say this, that I thank God every day for you. I say that in my prayers, and I'm sure that you may do the same as well. But he said, we are bound to thank God always for you, brethren, as it is necessary. It is meet. It is necessary because that your faithfulness. Now, the, the King James, because of your faith, but it is the word for faithfulness because that your faithfulness grows exceedingly. So what's that saying to you? you? You may be faithful tonight, but guess what? You can be more faithful. Amen. You, you say, well, I've been faithful all my life, but yet in this context, in, with the people at Thessalonica, Paul is simply saying to him, you can be more faithful. You can grow in your faithfulness. Now, again, that's something that God doesn't do for you. It's not something that's a one-time occurrence or happening in your life. It's an ongoing process in the life of the believer uh, to express faith and faithfulness to their God. And, and in doing that every day, what are we doing? We are growing. We're going to be more faithful next week than we were this week. Amen. Are you out here, out there? We're going to be more faithful this year than we were last year. Yeah. What are we going to be more faithful in? Well, we're going to be more faithful in loving people. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, where's Pig? Not just liking people, but we're going to be more faithful. We're going to be more faithful. We're going to be more faithful in loving people. We're, we're going to be more faithful in our, our th giving thanks to God. Yeah. We're going to be more faithful in prayer. Yeah. We're going to be more faithful in forgiving. We're going to be more faithful in, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, good confession and, and a lot of things that I can say. We're going to be more faithful. And as, the, as we become more faithful, what are we doing? We are growing. And Paul commended the people in uh, Thessalonica. He commended because that's what he saw uh, when he was there and, and when he wrote the letter addressing the Thessalonica, uh, the people there in Thessalonians. Fidelity, now we use the word fidelity, means that God and the believer are devoted one to the other. Now listen to God, God by the redemptive work of Christ, through Christ, through the shedding of his blood, now listen to it carefully, through shedding of his blood, what Jesus went through in his life, when he got to Pilate's judgment, uh, the courtyard and judge, Pilate's judgment hall, all the way to the cross, what God was doing, he was showing his faithfulness to you. He was showing his faithfulness to me to bring me out of the depths of something I couldn't get out of by myself. So he was faithful to get me out of a place that I was mired in because I couldn't get out by myself and I needed to get out in order to be united with him. I had to get out of that place. And the way I got out of that place was he made the way and was faithful to make the way so that I could be faithful to, to do what he told me to do so that he could bring me up and bring me out of, a, of, a, uh, of death, of darkness. He was faithful. So we ought to say thank God for his faithfulness. 
His faithfulness remains forever. His faithfulness will always be the same. It, it will never swerve. It will never sway. It'll never change. God is faithful. He always has been. He always will be. He always is tonight. He is faithful to his word. He's God and he cannot deny himself. And if he denies himself, he would deny his word. But his word is immutable. It is incorruptible and it cannot be changed. So therefore God's faith is forever to us from his word. It is an ever faithful God. We are to bind ourselves together. We are to be united together with our faithfulness to his faithfulness so that what can he do? Continue to lift us up in a greater place of light, a greater place of power, a greater place of, uh, of his wisdom, you name it, to lift us into a greater dimension, a greater realm of the goodness and of the kindness of God into realms that we have not yet been to, realms that we have not yet seen and realms that we don't even know anything about today. But as we continue to grow, as we continue to grow in our faithfulness, guess what? We're going to step into a new realm. We're going to step into a new understanding. We're going to step into a new dimension of our relationship with God where our faith then works exceedingly, amen, in our behalf and we continue to grow in the faithfulness of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you once again for being a part of our broadcast today. I'm always grateful to know that you're there and that you're watching and that the Lord is blessing you as you receive the word of the Lord. I want to pray with you uh, before we leave today. Father, I pray for the people. I pray, Lord, that your hand of blessing, your hand of deliverance, your hand that brings good things into their lives will be upon them and that they will receive that which you have provided for them in Christ Jesus and their life will be made better because of those things that you have done and that which they have received by faith from you. In Jesus' name, I pray. Thanks again. We always appreciate you being there, as I've already said, and we'll see you next time right here on Victorious Living. You've been watching Victorious Living with Pastor Charles Cowan. It's our hope that today's message has ministered to the need you have in your life. If you would like to receive today's message in its entirety, please call 1-800-842-7896. Or if you're in the Nashville area, call 615-226-2145 and ask for the product number on the screen. Visit us online at victoriousliving.org. If you're ever in the Nashville area, come and worship with us. Sundays at 10 a.m. and 6 p.m. and Wednesdays at 7 p.m. From Pastor Cowan and the Congregation of Faith is the Victory Church, we'll be looking for you next time right here on Victorious Living.